hey y'all hey guys um welcome to my channel <laughs> i'm sorry oh my my nose today i'm gonna be coming on here to tell y'all my testimony long away to testimony look i did my hair i said okay look we gonna get this done today I'm super excited to see what god's gonna do through this channel and through me um, i'm just a vessel i'm here to serve my father and that's it what this video is about um basically my life and what led me to jesus it took 22 years y'all it only took me 22 years see now you don't gotta go through all those years okay you can find the lord at a young age amen the lord has been putting on my heart to do this testimony for so long but honestly, I really didn't want to because I just felt a lot of shame. You know, it's like I felt like I was just putting my whole life for the world to see. And it says in the word, you cannot please man and your father. So if I'm here still trying to please man and still caring about what people think, then I'm not pleasing my father because you can't please the world and you can't please God. I'm going to say what he wants me to say. I'm going to get this testimony out and I'm going to give him all the glory because through all this that happened in my life, now that I know Jesus, now that I know him, I have a personal and intimate relationship with him. I see how through all of these events in my life and all these things that happened, I had no idea that God was there with me the entire time. God is just so graceful and merciful and I just pray that this blesses whoever this needs to bless because I know there's a lot of you guys who are younger, 15, 16, or even my age, you know, that may have gone through similar things and you may think that you're too far gone. You may think that you're too dirty. You may think that you you need to come cleaned up, but no, I was dirty, okay? I was, I was a dirty rag, okay? I'm trash and I'm still being sanctified and I'm still being purified from all that filth that I dealt with since I was a little girl. This is the beautiful thing about Christ. Our past does not define us. It took me a while to really like, understand because i always dwelled on the past and i always told god like god why why did this why did this and god is building me back up new i'm building my life on his love i'm building my life on him because he is a firm foundation okay praise god for finally letting this video be done thank you father i just want to do a little prayer um for those of you who are watching father i thank you for having me here recording this video father god I pray that whoever is here watching this video, Father, I pray that you touch their heart. Those who are being drawn in, Father, by your spirit, by you, Father, I pray this testimony brings them hope, Father, that it brings them peace, that they have a desire to get to know you more, Father God. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you work and you speak through me, Father God, for I'm just a vessel of you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, this is going to be a lot. <laughs> I just want to let y'all know about basically how I grew up. Grew up with no father. <laughs> um, I did have a dad at a certain age. I think it was like until I was four. And then I remember sort of like my dad just like disappearing. I guess I was just one age and he just went poof. And I'm just like, you know, I don't know where he went, but okay. At such a young age, I didn't know it at the time. It did cause a lot of rejection. I was a very rejected girl. I grew up in Baptist church. They would like come pick me up and like force me to go and knock and like literally ring the doorbell like you gotta go. I don't remember anything I learned. I just remember literally just winning goldfish and one time I won a thousand dollars. Like that's all I remember. I don't remember nothing about Jesus. I remember we were singing some songs, but when it comes to like having a relationship, that was just a bunch of religion. Like my aunt would always tell me about Jesus. She'd always tell me about revelation you know, Jesus is coming back and things like that. And I just believed it. I believe I was like 10, 11, 12, around that age. Literally out of nowhere, I'm like, okay, I wanna get baptized because I'm scared. And during this time, y'all, let me go back. I didn't really get like, I love yous from my family or like hugs or like anything like that from my mom. I always felt super ugly. I was very insecure. I started to have these weird, nasty desires. I literally at such a young age, I'm like, why am I feeling these things? Like, where did this come from? I started to deal with homosexuality as well. I remember one day I was home alone and I'm just like, I just want to watch porn. Like, I, I want to know what that is. So I searched it up on my mom's laptop. I didn't, y'all, I was so young. I didn't even know how to spell the word. That's how young I was. It was literally spelled, I literally searched it up on YouTube, y'all. And my mom came home and I remember she found it on the laptop 
and I got in trouble. She's like, why are you watching this? I would still watch it on my own time. Like I would do it secretly, like when no one was around or when no one was home. I started to watch weirder things, like when it came to porn. Literally at such a very young age, I used to really try hard to hide it. I would even start masturbating at a young age. And I just became very sexual and very perverted. So something that I realized is I grew up with a lot of fear. I grew up always so scared of death. Going back to what, what my aunt had um, told me. We found this church and then I went, I went to the service, don't remember nothing. I was just sitting there. So like, when, when, when are we going to baptize? Like, I didn't know what repentance was. I didn't know nothing. And then the whole service went by, no fire, no nothing, nothing sticking to me, no conviction, nothing. And I was like literally shaking. Like, I don't know why, I was just so scared. I ended up getting in line, preparing. I went in the water and I came out and I just was shaking so much after when I came out, shaking like this. I remember thinking in my head, I have a demon in me, a demon coming out of me because why am I shaking so much? It was definitely spirits that entered me at a young age. That is a fact either from generational curses, from the masturbation, from the rejection, these things open doors for spirits. Literally after I got baptized, I'd say like it was like a day or two or even the same day, but it was a few days or the same day. But that day, my aunt, she went somewhere and it was nighttime and she had to go inside and I waited in the car. And I believe I, I had this worship song. I don't know how I found this song. I don't know where this song came from. I don't know if my aunt played it. I don't know if I found it from the church. I don't know. But I had music on and I had this worship song on and I was in the back of the car and I was looking at the sky. I was looking up and I'm just like, what's the purpose of life? Why am I here? Like, I know somebody is up there. I know there is somebody up there. But I remember as I was looking up, right? It felt like something was looking at me back, which obviously I know it's God. But at the time, I'm like, something is looking at me. And I remember I started to cry. I started to bawl. And I was just like looking up, crying and bawling, listening to the song. And it had, now that I, now that I look back at it, that was definitely an encounter from God. And mind you, I was still watching porn. I was still dealing with rejection. Um, I would go on the internet and seek validation. And I was doing all of this behind the scenes. None of my family knew. I started to steal at this time as well. I started to steal from my family and I started to lie and act like it wasn't me. I would say at like four, I would say like at 15. Um, so those years, you know, between like 10 to like 15, I was just stealing, watching porn, like doing a bunch of just, just in sin. As I grew up, I had a lot of arguments with my family. Um, like I said, I didn't really get like, I love yous from my family. Yeah, they would buy us gifts and stuff. But there was a point where I would argue more with my um, family members, like my mom and stuff like that. And at this point, I kept going back and forth to like my grandmas and my moms and my grandmas. Like I would fight with my mom and then I would go to my grandmas and then I'll find my grandma and then I'll go to my mom. So it was like that for a while. Like I was just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And also growing up, I witnessed a lot of abuse, verbal abuse, mental abuse, abuse is abuse. At this age, like 15, I started to get depressed and I never really dealt with depression like that. I feel like I did have those feelings, but I didn't know how to navigate that because I didn't know how to navigate my feelings. I started to listen to these super depressed and suicidal songs. This is why music is so spiritual. It will literally motivate me to kill myself more. Like I became more depressed. I became more suicidal. Like I remember I would try to cut myself. Um, I would do like little slashes, but I was scared to like do the full cut. Remember I told you that I would just always uh, be very fearful. Like, I believe I would say like at the end of seventh grade, the beginning of eighth grade I was still um, stealing, doing all these things, watching porn. Even as I continued to watch porn, it started to get more weird. Like I started to watch more weird things, animals, and it was just, it was just nasty. Okay. It was very perverted. The devil definitely had me. Okay. This spirit of perversion definitely had me. For one day, um, I came from school and at this time I was fighting with my mom. I would constantly fight with my mom and I would witness abuse and um, it would just be like a back and forth, back and forth. I came back from school and I just felt like everyone hated me. I was just tired. I was so drained. Like everyone hates me. I'm like, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself so people can care about me. Well, my family doesn't care about me. Well, now they're going to care. That's literally how I was thinking. My sister, she has a, a cerebral palsy. So she has a lot of pills 
And I remember like there was just a huge cabinet and I'm just grabbing him. And I go to the bathroom, mind you, I don't tell nobody. My grandma's sitting in the living room my, and everyone's sitting in the living room. They're chilling a normal day. Just get back from school. And I go to the bathroom and mind you, y'all, I'm playing music. I'm playing this suicidal song and it's literally motivating me to kill myself. Like I kid you not, y'all. It was literally motivating me. I'm like, yes, I'm gonna do it. So start taking them. I start taking Tylenol. I start taking all these pills. I'm just taking them. I'm just taking. Them. I put the pills back. I go walk, go to the living room where my grandma's sitting down, where my aunt's sitting down, and I literally sit down and I act like nothing happened. I sit down and I'm just like, like waiting for something to happen. I believe this was like 15 minutes after sitting down. I'm like, I took a bunch of pills. She ended up calling the hospital or the ambulance, and I just blacked out. Blacked out, I woke up in the hospital. I seen like my family all around me. It was like my uncle, my aunt. First thing that I thought when I woke up and I seen my family members around me, I was like, oh, now they care. But before they didn't care. That's that's really what I thought when I woke up. They had told me that I had took mostly expired pills, that most of the pills that I took were not actually working. So they didn't, it didn't affect me as if I had taken pills that were not expired. Only pills that I took that were not expired were some Tylenol, but the rest of them, they were all expired. Still had me in the hospital for like a week or two. I was just sitting in bed and I was just like, no thoughts. I was just feeling empty, like watching TV. And I'm just like, why am I here? It's so sad to look back at that. So many younger, teens and you think that there's no purpose god is there but i didn't know god was there you know that was god having grace and mercy over my life because what if they were not expired what if they were actually working and then i, I actually had died that time and i would have died and went to hell right i wasn't thinking that at the time but now that i look back you know i thank god for having mercy over me i said okay like you it's time for you to go they start wrapping me in these in this thing and i'm over here thinking like oh i'm going home i didn't know i was going to mental hospital until I was literally there and I'm like, wait, like what's going on? I didn't really know what to think. I was just like, okay, I guess. Like, I don't really have a choice at this point. I ended up being in there for a month. We're doing like therapies, my mom and stuff like that. It was just really awkward for me because as I said, my family, there was never I love you. There was never like affection like that. Like for me personally, I love my family. Okay. I love them so, so much. I was trying to build this relationship with my mom, you know, being more open of the way that I felt it's really hard for me to do that. My mom didn't know Jesus. I didn't know Jesus this is what makes me have so much grace for others because it's like, how do we expect others to love us? when they don't even know what love is. Me and my mom, we had um, argued or something. She had said something like very hurtful at the time. And that just made me feel so much more rejected. I just had those thoughts again and it was just really bad. Like I still wanted to die. It was just like mostly a blur for me. Honestly, nothing really stuck to me. The world tries to fight things of the spirit in the flesh. Like I'm trying to fight these spirits you know, because I did have a spirit speaking to me, telling me to kill myself. Because that's what Satan is here to do, right? To kill, steal, and destroy. So Satan will literally try to get you to kill yourself. And that's what he was doing. Just got out. And like I said, nothing really stuck out to me. You know, it was just sort of like, you know, I, I'm glad to at least like be out in the real world again. Like I miss eating hot chips. Like that's basically it. My mom had moved in with a boyfriend. I was like, okay, I'm going to go move in with you because... At the time, like the school that I was staying at, like I'm just like, I'm just tired of living this same day, everyday life. So I ended up moving my mom. And when I got there, I started to get very rebellious. At this time when I moved with my mom, you know, there was a lot going on between like her boyfriend and me. Everything was good at first, but then it just started to be like tension. Like I started to argue with my mom. I just never felt like enough. I felt more rejected. Um, and this is when I try to uh, cut myself again. I was suicidal again. I used to just be super mean to my siblings. I ended up going to a new school. I made, you know, new friends and I was really excited for that. But I started to get very rebellious, still witnessed abuse during this time. I would even like get between the abuse and it would just get out of hand. Like me and my mom would sometimes fight physically. It came to like my friends in school. You know, I was just doing whatever, what everyone else was doing, whatever. Like, oh, let's go smoke weed. Okay, let's go. End of eighth grade to the beginning of freshman year, that's when I started to um, smoke weed and that's when I started to go to parties and stuff like that. More so leaning towards freshman year. I met certain friends at like these parties and stuff. This is when I just started to just start drinking, drunk all the time. I started to sneak out, take care of my siblings at home. 
And then at night, I would like sneak out. I would steal from my mom. I started to care more about my appearance. I'm taking more provocative pictures. I started to talk to guys online. You know, I live in Chicago. So if you live in Chicago, you probably know like it was, it was dangerous, okay? It was dangerous, okay? There would be guns. People would be getting shot. There would be fights. And I'll just be there literally 16 years old, 15, at a party drinking. I used to come home really late. I used to be literally out with this in the city the whole night. Literally with 21 year olds, 22 year olds in the car, 16, just driving drunk, like not caring on the expressway, just going fast. God had mercy over me because that situation could have been bad very quickly. I was being super rebellious at this time. Um, I was talking back to my mom. I just didn't care. I, I eventually stopped going to school. Still taking care of my brother at home and I wasn't treating my siblings, you know, with love because I was dealing with so much rejection and that's how generational curses come to be. They pass that on. I wasn't necessarily like getting sexually active. I was more so like masturbating and stuff like that. Um, but I would talk to boys and I would like entertain it. I would more so like do it on the phone. But I started to steal. I would steal my mom's credit cards and go out and be out all night. Literally come home like a day or even two days sometimes. I would even have to sleep in the garage, y'all. I started to do Zans for fun. I was doing this for like around like two years, not even really knowing my purpose, not knowing what the heck I'm doing with my life. I would be at the train station. Sometimes I would just be out and I would just cry on the alley. I would have to sleep over my friend's house. Like, hey, like I would go visit her at her job and I'll be like, hey, like my mom kicked me out. Like, can I go stay at your house? And she'll literally let me stay at her house. I'll say like 17, 18. This is when I started to become very depressed again. Um, I ended up moving back to my grandma's. I don't exactly remember the reason why. My friends lived on the south side and my grandma lived on the very north side. So I I didn't have a job. I did have a job actually around like that time when I was being super rebellious. I was like a caterer, but I wasn't really making that much. When I moved back to my grandma's, obviously I didn't have a job. I didn't know what to do with my life. I didn't go to school. I didn't have friends over there. I just felt rejected. I was depressed again. I was also stealing again at this time. This is when I started to um, do music leads at home. I didn't do anything, so I was just home making music leads. I was very lost at this point in my life because I was finding an identity in drinking and in my friends and going out. And it's like when this these things were taken away from me, it was like I didn't know what to do anymore. This is going on to like how I started to get followers on social media. During this time when I was living with my grandma, I started to post on Musical.ly. I just started to just get likes, 10 likes, 20 likes, whatever. And then I just continued to do it. Didn't really have any like, oh, I'm going to be famous. And then people started to find my videos and my videos just literally started to go viral, like literally out of nowhere. My mom then, she had moved from that old house that she lived in. This is like a year later or something, I don't know, a few months maybe like more towards a year, saying that she's gonna move to Arizona and if I wanna go with. So I'm like, oh yes, please. Just excited, cause I'm like, you know, something new, like a new place. I was really longing for that. Um, my soul was really longing for God. So I ended up going and that's when I started to post more on like Musical.ly and stuff. I think it was already TikTok at this point. So I'm like still trying to figure out what to do in my life. You know, I'm trying to get a job. I'm trying to see, I'm like, okay, should I go to school? Like I don't have my GD, like I don't have anything. I dropped out. At this point, I'm already 18. 18, I'll say going on to 19 maybe. I'll say more so 18. I end up getting a job. My little brother and sister and siblings are home, so I'm taking care of them. And we would always fight. We would always argue. Um, I wouldn't treat them good. Me, I'm over here thinking, oh, moving to a new place is going to cure all my problems. I'm going to be good. No, I was still dealing with the rejection. I was still dealing with the addictions, the porn addiction, the trauma that I had from when I was younger, from like the abuse and like the argument, the things that I seen, I was still dealing with that. But I didn't really know it, but I realized like, you know, I'm feeling depressed again. I was doing TikTok at this time or Musical.ly. So I had already gained, like I'd say a following. I was getting um, some money from social media. I started to buy things online, you know, buy clothes and just post more. I eventually stopped going to work. As, and when I realized, okay, maybe I could start making money from this. And mind you, I never had like a lot of money. So when I started to see that I was like getting money, like a good amount off social media, just from like posting, I started to actually take it serious because I wasn't taking it serious. I would like be home all day. I would never go out. I had no friends in Arizona, absolutely no friends. I continued to like do TikTok. My videos just literally started to go viral. Yeah, I started to make up lies so I could get likes. I'm like, ooh, like this person did this to me. Ooh, my boyfriend did this. Like nobody did nothing. Like my life, <laughs> there, was not, there was nothing going on in my life, okay? I was straight up lying for likes and, and followers. Like that's when I started to have that mindset. Like, ooh, this is clearly people like when I post about this. So let me um, keep posting about it. I liked 
the feeling of like, you know, gaining followers. And then I started to post on YouTube and then I started to just revolve my whole life around social media. Like, oh, I need, I could do this. Like, I'm going to do this and this and this, like revolve my whole days around that. And I would literally have no life outside of that. I had no identity outside of social media. My whole identity was that. I'll say like my whole year, my whole 19, age of 19, I was growing, I was making money. That's at this time, me and my mom would still argue. I would still fight with my siblings and stuff like that. Like I was still dealing with a lot at home. I was still dealing with a lot in my heart. I still had a lot of hurt. You know, I had likes and followers, but that's not going to fulfill me. Likes and followers are not going to fulfill you. It's not. But basically, started to get brand deals and stuff. So I'm like, you know, I'm grown now. Like, I'm going to go back to Chicago and I'm going to go see my old friend. They're buying my own plane tickets and I go back to Chicago. And, and mind you, I look perfect. Like, ooh, she's so nice. She's so pretty. Like, the Lord does not look at the outward appearance, okay? The world looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. My heart was wicked. Okay, my heart was in sin. My heart was filthy. But I realized that as I started to get older and do my own my own things, I started to grow resentment towards my mom. At this time, I want to be very honest with y'all. I felt at the time, I'm like, ooh, like I feel like more myself. I feel like I'm finding myself. But let me tell you, I was not finding nothing. Okay, just because you change your appearance, that doesn't mean you're finding yourself. You're putting on makeup and doing your hair a certain way. That doesn't mean you're finding yourself. You want to know what finding yourself is? Finding yourself is knowing that your identity is in Christ. You find your identity in Christ. That's when you find yourself. You're not going to feel fulfilled. You're going to keep searching and searching and looking. What else can I change? What else? What else? What else? That if you just start dressing provocative and just wearing whatever you want, that, that's finding yourself. That's not finding yourself. That's the world's definition. But what about your heart? What about all that hurt that you dealt with as, as a kid? All the trauma, that unforgiveness. And I thought at this time, oh, I'm finding myself because I'm dyeing my hair now. I'm getting more followers. I'm getting more likes. People like me because I'm dressed how I'm dressing. So I'm like, oh, yeah, this is me. I wasn't fornicating at this time. I was still a virgin. I was um, talking to guys on the Internet. You know, I was lusting. I was sexing. I was doing all these things. For all this time in Arizona, I decided to come back to Chicago because, as I said, I'm making more money. I started to become very selfish. One of my friends from when I was when I would go drink with when I was younger, she had invited me to a festival and I never been to a festival. And this is when sort of things just got crazy for me. There's still a void in my heart. So, and I was trying to fill that void. I didn't know it at the time, but I was, right? That's why I kept chasing things. I went to this festival and I go with a, a group of friends. And, you know, that's when I got introduced to this drug called ecstasy. Um, they're like, hey, like try out this drug, like try out this pill. And I'm like, oh, okay, like sure. Cause everyone else was doing it. And I'm like, you know, this is a new experience. Like, why not? So take an entire one. I remember just tripping out. Whoa, like I never felt nothing like this. And I remember like this whole different side of me came out. So I'm like, wow, like this is the purpose of life. Like you can be free. You can do whatever you want. You can do drugs. Like there was just a bunch of like teens, like people my age, just like getting drunk, drinking, dancing. And I'm like, oh yes, like this is it. Like I would go to parties back then. But this was like the festival was something different for me because it just felt like more free and open. It felt like a, a, it felt like euphoric, like it felt like euphoria. After that, I started to go to festivals that whole summer. Every festival that I would go to, I started to do that drug ecstasy. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, that whole like depression thing, like when I was off these drugs, like it made it go away. I have felt like, dang, like I feel happy. I feel like I found my purpose. At that time, I felt like, wow, like this is it. That's why I got so addicted to festivals went to my first edm festival the edm if you guys know like the whole plur edm rave community that's a whole nother thing and i'm like wow like everyone is so nice here they're complimenting my outfit i love the music this community they're so nice like they accept me winter came up i started to go to more edm concerts but it was not a festival. It was more like at an arena, if that makes sense. I remember I used to be so excited. I'm like, yes, let's get these pills. Like, let's go. After doing ecstasy, I started to get into psychedelics. And mind you, I'm still posting on social media. At the time, I took it, but, you know, it was more of like fun for me. As I got more deep into psychedelics, it started to get more spiritual for me. But when I first started taking it, it was more like of a party thing. Like, I'm just like having fun. Like, I just started laughing. Like, you know, lights were flicking and all these things. At this time, um, I got into my first relationship, I believe, in 2019. I wasn't I wasn't really drinking at this time. I was more so just doing drugs. I started to do it like every weekend at this point. I started to like hear my friends' thoughts. I used to feel like what they were feeling. We didn't even have to talk. Like we could just literally like 
hear each other's thoughts. They started to get more like spiritual for me, but I didn't know it was spiritual. I thought that I had opened my third eye. Now I see the world all differently, like just love everyone. This relationship that I was in at the time, um, it started to get very toxic. I started to fornicate. You know, the devil has his foot in that relationship. It started to get abusive. It was really taking a toll on me as I was doing these drugs. My mom, I still had a lot of resentment. I wasn't really talking to my mom at this time. I started to come back to my grandma's house, like literally off acid and stuff. But then I just eventually stopped going back to the house. Like I started to completely like sleep over with the person I was with, my best friends at the time. I was just like very honest with them and very open and we had just clicked right away. So when I had found these group of friends, I pray that they come to Jesus, amen, amen. Okay, it was something that I never felt. I'm like, wow, like these people are like, they're such good people. I didn't know that you can have like this type of, you know, relationship with people, be so open with them and things like that. I began to like do um, drugs together. I would say this is like 2020. The relationship that I was in just started to get more abusive. At this time, I had just felt like I had lost myself. Didn't know who I was because I had just done so much drugs. You know, I had already um, fornicated. Remember I cut my hair off. And even at this point in my life, people would ask me like, what do you believe in? And I used to say that I was atheist. I was just so depressed. I was just so rejected. I just looked for an escape in drugs. I looked for an escape and I was addicted. I was a drug addict. I want to say I was a drug addict. I started to mix things. I would isolate myself from like Monday through Friday and then I would like come out on Saturday and just go do drugs and go party. I was so suicidal in 2020, 2021, like all those years I was always suicidal and I completely had lost myself. I completely lost myself. And I remember on social media, I couldn't fake it anymore because I was not posting. And I remember I put a video and I'm like, hey, like I'm, I basically said like, I'm going through the worst time of my life right now. And I remember like people were like making fun of me and they're like, why are you posting this? And I deleted it. I never really spoke about like that, like openly my feelings on social media. And the relationship I was in, I still had those desires, those sexual desires of watching porn. So I would watch porn behind this person's back and I felt a lot of shame. I felt like, why am I like this? Like, why do I keep doing this? Why, why is life like this? Like, what happened? I remember when I told you guys in 2019, you know, I thought I'm like, I found myself in all these things. And then like a year, two years later, I'm looking back and I'm like, what happened to her? These friends that I had at the time, they were my, they were my, my safe place. They were my escape. Because at the time, my fa my relationship with my family was very broken. It was very like, there was no relationship really, you know? Yes, I could call on them, of course, but there was no, I could sit down and talk to them. The only people who I felt like I could really do that with was with these friends. And I was open. I was telling them that like, I would cry to them. Like they would seen like the worst in me. Like they seen that time in my life where I was doing so bad. Remember when I wasn't with them, I would feel very depressed. This is when I got pregnant because I started to fornicate. Oh, this is so hard to talk about. Oh Lord. I remember um, I used to purposely do drugs, do ecstasy, purposely drink alcohol. I wasn't really posting on social media, so I was struggling a lot financially. I'm like, yeah, I can't afford that, so I'm just gonna try to kill it on my own. I ended up going to the, to the abortion clinic. They checked me in. Uh, now that I look back, that doctor had molested me. So demonic, y'all. That day, literally that day that I went, I started bleeding and they told me like, come back. But literally when I went home, I started to have blood clots. So that's when I knew I'm like, oh, I had a miscarriage. Time went on, still doing drugs, still in the depression, still just in that cycle, in the toxic cycle. I was moving around a lot, moving to different places. I was struggling a lot financially, uh, but I ended up um, getting pregnant again. This time I was like, you know, I'm gonna keep the baby. I don't wanna have an abortion again. Um, Cause when I had had the first abortion, I had a lot of guilt and emotions after that. One thing I also dealt with during this time was a lot of torment in my mind. A lot of torment. The only ones who really knew about all this, like my life, my life was my friends who were like my safe place. I ended up getting like a little belly again. This was the time when I started to get sick and this was the time when I started to actually feel the pregnancy symptoms. During this time too, I was taking plan B's, birth control. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go get an abortion. But at first I was like, no. I go to the clinic again. But I really drag it out this time. Like I didn't go right away. I went like after like three weeks or something. I go to a different clinic and they're like taking my shots or what I don't know. They're like, you know, preparing me. I don't know. They're literally showing me the baby. I told the person that I was with, I'm like, or I'm like even telling myself, I'm like, you know, if I have to do like the surgery for an abortion, I'm not getting an abortion. 
if it's not the pill, then I'm not doing it. So they told me, yeah, you're about to be a certain amount of weeks in two days. So if these two days have passed, you wouldn't be able to take the abortion pill, but you could take it now. Like you came at the right time. So I'm like, oh wow, like really? He gave it to me and I ended up going home. It was so hard. I remember I was just crying and it was just like the pain was so bad. Literally feel, it's so demonic y'all. You could literally feel in your stomach, the baby dying. And I was just crying and crying. Like that was really torturing me, you know, after that. It was just years of just, it just felt like, you know, and like, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, I did have moments where I felt happy. It was always temporary. I was happy until I wasn't. Like every time that I was happy, I was back to suicidal again. It was worse than the time before. It was more of a burden than last time. And then it just kept being like a heavier burden, a heavier burden. I didn't feel like I was worth anything. I was still doing drugs this whole time. So as I said, I was addicted. I was addicted to ecstasy, molly, um, drinking liquor, vaping. I started vaping. I was vaping every single day. I couldn't go 30 minutes without vaping. I, I would get shaky when I didn't hit it. Um, I would literally get annoyed. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Father God. And I was still watching porn at this time. I was still dealing with these feelings of homosexuality. I wouldn't even eat sometimes. When I would post on social media, I started to change my appearance a lot. I started to um, follow whatever was cool on TikTok because I was rejected and I wanted to feel accepted. So I would do whatever to, um, I started to just do whatever was cool in a way that I could do it and just, you know, I just continued to put on more accessories and just put on more clothes and just completely change my appearance. And I, I just started to hate myself. I started to hate my natural eye color. This started in 2019. I started to become very insecure about my natural eye color. So I would always wear contacts. People literally thought I had green eyes because I wore contacts every single day. That's how much I hated my, my natural eye color. I felt like at this point, like people did not like me for me. I felt like I could never just go on social media with no makeup and just chill and just be normal because I felt like people would reject me and I didn't want to be rejected. I'm still like just completely trying to fill this void. And at this time, I actually started to pray. I started to pray to God. I started to see more deaths happen around me. So I'm like, dang, like, life could really be gone like this. Like, I was completely in sin. Like I, I didn't know you could have a relationship with God. I didn't know the Holy Spirit. I didn't know anything. I would just pray, but I would literally pray to Yeshua. I would say in the name of Yeshua, please protect my family. And I would literally even pray off drugs. During this time, I was like looking into like shadow work. And this is when I started to get into like new age or like witchcraft. I was witchcraft. If you guys know that one app, that horoscope app, what is it called? Uh, All Star or something? co-star would come into agreement with those things and i feel like at this time i was craving something more spiritual so you know um, i was getting into like crystals and like evil eyes and all these things you know just the new age stuff i had a bunch of crystals to look up like what crystal is for this and then i will buy i would try to look for like a pure version of it like when i will wear the crystal i will get paid but you see that's the devil blessing you that's not god blessing me that's the devil and every time when i would get paid it would be gone like that Literally, I don't. I wouldn't even know what I would spend it on. It would just be gone, and then I'll be broke again, and then I'll be like praying again to this crystal. Mind you, I'm praying to God. I'm literally saying in the name of Yeshua, like the sage and stuff. Like, oh, we need to light up this sage. We need to cleanse the air, the energies, and that spirit. I just was com continuing to get blackout. I was getting into new age, believing in these crystals, completely changing my appearance, dressing more provocative showing like literally i would wear like the smallest skirts like show like have my whole butt out like have little bras and I felt like i was seducing people like, i would feel like people would i felt like people would get seduced to me and that's the spirit i didn't know what to do anymore y'all i didn't know what to do i didn't know at this time I, I was blowing up on social media again people were liking my new outfits but it was just like it wasn't doing anything the crystals weren't doing nothing the festivals weren't doing anything i just didn't care at this point I'm just like, whatever, like whatever is happening, like I'm with it, like, let's go. Go to the club, let's go, I'm gone. Let's, let's pop this, let's do this. You know, that's just how I felt. I would isolate myself, as I said again. And then only like once a week, I would get up and do videos. And I remember I would feel so drained, like, like I gotta, you know, put all these things on. Like I had nothing left in me at this point. God just one day, just one day, literally, I, that's how I could explain it. Literally one day, 
my heart was just so heavy. And I just asked myself, am I going to heaven or hell? I knew that if I had died that day, I would go to hell. I was literally in a car with random people I didn't even know. They were passing around a Hennessy bottle. And I'm literally just looking out the window, having these thoughts. And I'm literally in my mind, I'm like, God, mind you, I never said this to God, never. I'm like, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. Like, I'm literally just repeating that in my head out of nowhere, y'all. Literally just a random like heaviness. And I'm just in my head looking out the window and I'm just scared. I'm like about to cry. We don't know when we're going to die. You see what I'm saying? This car, he, this car can, can crash right now and I'm gone. The things that I was still going through, you know, aside from that heaviness, I was still very depressed and suicidal. Like I was literally telling the person I was with, I'm like, I'm gonna die. Like, I'm gonna get a knife and I'm gonna kill myself. I don't wanna be here anymore. I wanna die. Like I would say that and I would look at this person and I'll be like, I can't anymore. And I remember literally that night, I felt so alone, y'all. And I went to the bathroom, right? And I literally just said, God, I repent. And I just started crying. I didn't even know what repentance really was, but I, it was just on my heart. And I just started crying and crying. Like, it was like a cry, I, I, like a cry, like I never cried before. Now I know that that was the Holy Spirit coming over me, you know, but I just had so much hurt. All I could do is cry, literally. I just repented for all of it. I'm like, God, I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry. Like, I was saying everything to him. I'm like, I'm sorry, God, help me. Like, I was inviting him, like, God, help me because I don't know what to do anymore. I'm tired. I have all this trauma. I don't know, God. Like, I was just telling him, like, what was on my heart? It was like a deep inner knowing that I knew he was there, y'all. And when I, when I cried and cried, I had a peace, y'all. I had a peace. And I kid you not, y'all, I was crying and crying day after day after. And I just felt a peace, a peace, a peace every time. It was like some hope. There was hope. And I remember I downloaded the, it was not even the Bible app, but it was like a, a app where you could like scroll through scriptures. It was just speaking to me. Like, I, I just knew it was God. I just knew, I'm like, God, you like, I just know it's you. I just knew y'all. And God will, will put that in you. That's the Holy Spirit that gives you that. Where it's like, you know, you know, you know. And you see how like God just drew me in out of nowhere. Like I was not expecting to be here. I'm I'm not a, I was not expecting I'm not expecting to be here right now telling my testimony, talking about Jesus and how I love him, how I have a relationship with him and how he's real and all these things and the Holy Spirit and all these things. I never expected this. I never thought that this is where I would be. I never thought that I would be walking in joy and peace that I never felt all these 22 years of my life through all the drugs and all these things. I never felt no peace, no fulfillment like God has given me, y'all. There's no drugs. It's just me and his presence. It's tangible. You know, and now I have a, a repaired relationship with my mom, my family, my brother. Now I love them and I truly love them. I love the ones, who, the people in my past who may have hurt me. I love them. I forgive them and y'all I'm telling you I would never be able to do that on my own I always had unforgiveness I had resentment towards my brother my mom towards so many people y'all when you and God know the depths of what you felt those nights when no one was there when you were just so broken and hurt and God you know that God has brought you out of that you know the things that God has done for you of course I'm gonna want to talk about him of course I'm gonna dedicate my whole life to him that's the least I can do for him who's this platform that he's given me for him a lot of people don't want to talk about this but if you die today are you going to heaven or hell feel that that pull like I want to get to know God more that is by him that is God calling you, but it's up to you if you want to, if you want to accept that call. It's up to you. When God first drew me in. Let me tell you, there was a lot of lukewarmness. There was a lot of falling back. It took me a long time to let go of the weed. It took me a long time to let go of all those things. But He's a faithful God. God did it for me. He could do it for any of you guys watching this. And the fact that I'm even on here telling y'all and being so open with y'all, that's not by me. That's the Holy Spirit. This is all God, y'all. I'm telling you, it's all God and he is so good. And I just pray that this video blessed you guys. I pray that it blessed you and that it touched your heart in some way and it gave you hope 
and it gave you that hope that you have a purpose, a true purpose in Jesus Christ in Yeshua HaMashiach and your father, because he is very much real. He is not a religion. For any of you guys who are watching this and you have church trauma or anything, please try God out for your own. Here's your sign to try God out for your own. Cry out to him on your own. Surrender to him on your own. Repent. Turn to him. Try him out on your own. And I'm not talking about just a one, two, three, say Jesus and you're saved. No, I'm talking about seeking God and truly following him. But yeah, y'all, that's basically it. That's basically all I'm feeling on my heart to say. Um, <laughs> Praise God. Um, hopefully I didn't forget anything. Um, I pray that this bless you, um, all my beautiful brothers and sisters. I love you all so much. Can't wait to see y'all in heaven. Okay, we gonna turn up. Just, he's just so good, y'all. He's just so good. Make sure you guys subscribe. Turn on your post notifications, y'all. I love you guys. God bless you all. I pray this bless you. And yeah, bye.